I welcome all the students on behalf of Civil Services Preparatory School. I am Professor Riaz Anjum and here we have today this presentation which deals with the essentials of English or the basic problems which you have while writing or speaking or making use of uh, this language. And our presentation is based on the theme that uh, the things which we commonly do and which we shouldn't do as our recurrent theme would be do not or never ever. We straight away go to the first major mistake which is before you like uh, the students mix up the present simple and present indefinite. Like we have two sentences, Akbar is a good friend of mine. He lives just next door to me. Now you just uh, think about, about these two sentences. Both of them are, are of present tense. But when you take them closely and differentiate them, so there would be a basic difference that in the sentence, Akbar is a good friend of mine. There is no action or activity involved in it. There is a simple piece of information being conveyed in the present tense. And the other sentence which is, he lives just next door to me. There is an action or activity involved in which we have used the finite verb, lives. So we have not to mix up these two sentences to make sentences like, he is lived near my house. This is a sort of blunder which we can, can have in language. Uh, we move to the next point of the error that is never ever use a second or third form with a model verb which is will, shall, would, should, can, could, may, might, must and ought to. So these are the model verbs and we are always supposed to use first form with all these model verbs. Like we have the examples, he can or could help me in this problem. And we should never use he will or would helped me in this problem. So we have crossed it. The next is use a second, never ever use a second or third form with the auxiliary, auxiliary verb that is is MR was verb except in the passive voice. Like we have the example, he is or was did his work in time. Of course, this is wrong, uh, but in passive, we can say this work is always done by him on time. So that is only in case of a passive statement. And now we discuss that what form we have to use with the auxiliary verbs, is a mark, was work, and that is the point. Always use the ing or the fourth form with all these verbs. The example is, he is working in the field and he will be doing his work in the evening. We move to the next page. And that is, the next point is, never ever use first or second form with has, have, had. Rather always use the third form with these verbs. For example, I have done my work in time or he has done his work in time. But remember, has to, have to, had to will always take the, take the first form. For example, I have or had to finish my work in time because it becomes an infinitive and here the rule of the has, have, had will not apply because uh, in, in this uh, kind, to would govern the form and that will be the first form. The next point is make a plural. Never ever make a plural with S or E S of a noun which does not fall in the category of a common noun. The students are in habit of using this S or E S with the, uh, I mean to make words like poors and the peoples uh, which is incorrect. And we have the example, here we have book and books. Now this is an object which is countable, which is common. Like egg, we can make eggs or books or apples, but we shouldn't uh, make poor from poor and dozens 
and children etc uh, and when we need a plural of uh, these uh, words most of them are uh, adjectives we are supposed to use the definite article the to make the poor that is the honest which means it would make it a class of people and it would give the plural sense if you can also see that there is a particular expression dozens of people that is correct that is uh, not used in its common sense next point is never ever use an article definite or indefinite except a single countable noun to generalize or particularize it for example so the basic criteria of using the definite or indefinite article is that we should have a single singular countable noun which is of course a common noun like the we have the example there is a cow grazing in the field now here we have a common animal cow and this is called generalization which means that we have pointed out an animal on the basis of no particular reason but just a common mention or pointing out something so we have used the indefinite article a like we can say there was an apple in the basket or there was a boy in the classroom but the next sentence the cow grazing in the field is mine here is something which we call particularization here the animal the same animal is being described but with a particular claim or reference or which makes it liable for the definite article to be used so it becomes the cow grazing in the field is mine the boy sitting in the classroom is the monitor and the book which i bought yesterday has been lost so all these cases are while we make the singular countable noun we mention it in a particular reference next we move to the next point that is never ever use the definite article the with a proper material or abstract noun now students we have basically six types of nouns and you can see we use the article with only one or two of them that means that we mostly misuse it we use it where it is not needed like it is not needed with a proper noun with a material noun or with an abstract noun because these things they cannot be specifically described they are all always either they are concepts or images like the abstract noun honesty and poverty or in other case there are very very particular specified like we have lahore islamabad pakistan like that we can have examples like he went to the lahore that is wrong it means that there are two or three lahores one which was built by the moguls and the other maybe were built by some somebody else which is not the way it is one in the same city which you should never call he went to the lahore it is always lahore similarly he believes in the islam that is wrong he believes in islam and i love pakistan not the pakistan and now we come to the material nouns like he drank the water means that there was a particular water which he drank which is not the case because there is no specification being mentioned it is simply being said that he he took a liquid which we call the water water so it should be he drank water not the water similarly gold is a precious metal that is correct the gold that is wrong and similarly the oxygen is very essential for life so here we are talking about the common uh, sort of uh, the substance which is oxygen no particular mention about it now we come to the abstract noun like the beauty needs no ornament the honesty is the best policy and the poverty is a great adversary again there is no need of using this definite article with these abstract nouns because we can't specify them and uh, uh, we now move uh, to the next page that is never ever use a first second form in a passive voice but always the third form we have already mentioned it that uh, with auxiliary verbs we mostly use the ing form but for passive we use uh, the first form the example is the plants are watered by the gardener and here uh, we should uh, this is incorrect we should always call the plants are watered by the gardener and the letter will be dispatched today it is incorrect we should say the letter will be dispatched today that is the correct sentence uh, the next point is or the common error of expression in speaking is user never ever use a second or third form after two 
but I always use the first form because after two, uh, it makes a verb an infinitive. Like when somebody asks from us that what is the English of Khelna, we commonly reply play, that is wrong. Play means Khelo, that is imperative. If somebody asks what is the English of Khelna, we should say true play, which is an infinitive. And it is called an infinity because it shows an indefinite action, timeless action, which is not time bound. And uh, so we should always use the first form like, I have yet to do my work and they went to play in the park. So uh, the, this, this is the first form. Next point is, always make the correct choice of the subject and the verb to be used. This is called the subject verb agreement. A, in, 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 in many sentences, in some of the sentences, there are two subjects and we are not, uh, uh, we are not clear what is the real subject and here we should have this rule uh, like uh, a small diagram is there that he and along with it the coordinating conjunction like with along with as well as his brothers. So he like his brothers. Now the question is whether we will say is or are. Commonly, the student would go for, he like his brothers are a good athlete, but that is wrong. Because in this case, the real subject is the first one. He like his brothers is just a reference, which doesn't uh, change the real nature of the uh, subject to make it a plural. It is a singular subject. So we, we would always say that he like his brothers is a good athlete. Similarly, he with his friends was going to the park. We shouldn't say that he with his friends were going to the park. That would be incorrect. Next we have that never ever, uh, now this never ever is not applying with it. Rather it always make the correct choice about the correct noun or subject or plural in a particular case or situation. For example, there are certain subjects or nouns which have both uh, the connotation they are treated as a sing single entity and then of course a singular verb will, will be used with them and at times when a group of persons object is meant from that particular noun then it uh, takes a plural verb like the example is the team has or have lost its opening match here has is correct because the team is being mentioned as a single entity but in, this, in the next sentence the team lost their hats while on flight from Colombo to Karachi because this is an action which cannot be performed collectively as a single entity. Here it becomes groups, those who lost the hats and those who did not. Similarly, the next example is the jury was unanimous in its verdict in the court. So here jury performs as a single entity and we use the uh, verb is. But the next sentence, the jury were divided uh, in their verdict in the court here. The jury has uh, divided into groups, so it can't be taken as a single entity and the verb are is being used with or were is being used with it. The next, again, example, the audience was stunned by the speech of the chief guest. Here the audience is treated as a single entity. In the next sentence, the audience raised their hands. Here the audience divides into groups. The one who raised the hands and the and the one who did not. Next point, the use of an article is an indication for the subject being a singular or plural. Uh, in certain sentences, we have two subjects mentioned or two norms mentioned at the beginning of the sentence as a subject. There, at times we are confused, which is uh, whether there is one person or there are two persons. And here is the rule. See the first sentence, the chairman and CEO of the firm is or are because apparently there are two people, the chairman and CEO and a student would 90% go for are but no, it's wrong. The chairman and CEO of the firm is because it is one person with two portfolios and we should always use singular verb. But now the question is what would indicate that there are one, there is one person or two people? See the next example. The chairman and the CEO are not in the office today. We are using are. Now you just tell me that what is the difference between the chairman and CEO of the firm is. 
the chairman and the CEO are and there is a very minute difference, delicate difference that is in the second sentence we have the article with both uh, the subjects, the chairman and the CEO. So this article would define whether they are one person or two people and it would decide about the type of work to be used with them. The next point is, never ever or do not use S to make the plural form of certain nouns which appear to be singular but uh, they are already plural or collective nouns. So we are in habit of using S or ES with the, all the words which uh, seem to be singular and we make a plural like cattle, people, furniture, fruit, poetry, scenery, sheep, deer, fish, etc. So all these words, they are already plural or some of them are used the same in singular and plural form like sheep or deer or fish. But we have a point, remember we can use the word sheep or fishes for a particular group of these animals when to separate them from the herd or the group. In the common situation, we have the sheep for one animal and we have the same word sheep for a herd of uh, almost uh, maybe 10, 15 animals. But you just imagine that we have a herd of 15 sheep and two or three of them deviate or distract from the main herd then we would use the word sheep as the example is the sheep that stayed from the herd were attacked by the wolf. Similarly, the same is the case, the golden fishes which you brought yesterday have died of gold. Here, of course, we want to differentiate a group of fish from the general other uh, found in the aquarium. And the next is the fruits of labor. Here we have a particular use uh, which is a sort of a proverb in which fruits is used. Commonly, we should called fruit, not fruits. Next point is always opt a correct choice of the preposition. We have so many doubts about the preposition. We use uh, mostly use a preposition on the sense of our language Urdu, uh, which is in many cases incorrect. Like Urdu mein to hum ab kehte ki wo haise se mara, but we can never say that he died from cholera last month. We should always say he died of cholera last month because his death and the disease has a relation or belonging and always used for that sense of belonging or possession. Next example, this gentleman comes of, the same is the of a good family because a family and a gentleman has a connection or a belonging. And remember from is used always to describe a physical source from which we get an object like we can have a book from a library and we can have vegetables from the market. Next is he was accused of theft by the police. Remember of is used sense of belonging or possession. And similarly I bought the vegetables from the market as I have already discussed that from is for a source and I issued the book from the, li the, from the library. Next is use, never ever use apostrophe S with a noun, with a non-living object. We can use apostrophe S always with a living person like the example, the chair's leg has been broken, that is wrong. We should call the leg of the chair has been broken, but we can always say I intend to borrow a slums camera for this event. Okay students, uh, we had uh, this presentation and I hope that uh, most of your queries, confusions that are sorted out and, uh, and I am sure that after going through this presentation, uh, at least 50 to 60% of your common errors and blunders that would be sorted out and uh, best of luck. Thank you.